Hey everybody, uh, it's Joel Howe and this is going to be the first in a series of tutorials on polygon modeling in 3ds Max. So in this, in this first tutorial what I want to do is just kind of introduce you to the idea of polygon modeling. Uh, so we're going to look at comparing and contrasting primitive objects or uh, parametric objects versus uh, what a polygon model is. And uh, we'll do some basic work here, um, but over the uh, this tutorial and the next tutorial, I want to get you l understanding how to do polygon modeling and why we why we do polygon modeling, and um, give you an introduction to it in terms of 3ds Max. So, initially, uh, what's the question is what is polygon modeling and why do you care about it? And so I have a couple of uh, objects here that I made. I made. Uh, uh, some dishes and a dish rack and um, and a platform and uh, I think I'm actually going to turn this to just shaded so we can have a little less fluctuation so we've got our um, just visually a little, little less detailed and so I wanted to look at my basic scene here and show you I've got um, a chamfer box as kind of a platform and this is an example of a parametric object or a primitive in 3ds Max and if you take a look, I'm in the uh, Modify panel over here, and you can see that we've got uh, parameters that we can can adjust to, to modify this object. But we're really limited to just what we see here. So if I were to make a new parametric object, uh, in this case you go to the Create panel and uh, Geometry, and we have a, a variety of options here. Um, in standard primitives or extended primitives. I had created the chamfer box, and I'll just bring that up here uh, because I think it's a pretty good example here. And uh, I'm just clicking and dragging to create this to define the length, the width, the height, and the fillet radius. So if I actually zoom in on this, uh, this is our chamfer box. And I'll hit F4 to show edged faces. And um, here we are, and I can adjust these parameters. I'm still in the create panel because I've created this but we can also go to the modify panel and do the same thing. And so we can adjust the length and the width and the height and the fillet radius. And uh, so this is great. If you need a box with rounded edges you you here you go. It's, it's pretty easy to do. And we can control overall uh, mesh topology in terms of segments along an edge and um, and also fillet segments. And uh, I can actually bring this down to one fillet segment. You can see there's 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 a, a true chamfered edge, uh, just a flat angled edge. And so this is a really good example of a primitive or a parametric object. And uh, so again, if you needed a box and you needed rounded edges, then it's it's pretty much uh, the easiest thing to build. Um, the downside of these objects. Are that we uh, we can't really adjust anything. Like if I wanted to uh, to to go in and actually edit part of this box, I really can't. Uh, so what we need to do at that point is start to manipulate uh, the the actual topology of the mesh at a at a um, at a at a more detailed level. And so what I want to do here is actually just take this object, take this chamfer box object. And I'm going to right click and we're going to do a convert to and I'm just going to convert this to an editable poly. Now when I do that notice that in the uh, modify panel we no longer have those those uh, length width height fillet radius parameters to change the object. Now this has been converted into a uh, edit editable poly object which means we get to edit this uh, at at what 3ds Max calls the sub-object level. So if I want to actually adjust a particular face in the object, I can do that. I can go to a polygon and we'll see that I can select an individual face and now I can move that and pull that out and push and pull and uh, now I'm manipulating this object based on the uh, based on individual components in the mesh topology. So if I uh, if I want to uh, just to show some capabilities of polygon modeling, I could uh, I can select uh, a an edge, 
and I can uh, create a select an edge loop which basically goes all the way around the object and now I can start to kind of move this around and now I could select this edge here and do an edge ring and that selects uh, perpendicularly around the object uh, and I can actually I can convert this edge selection to the actual faces along this edge by control clicking the polygon and now I've got this polygon selection I'll undo that move and let's see I'm gonna extrude and you know what I'm gonna extrude a little different way here and uh, I'm gonna extrude via local normal so we can just see we can start to add features that were, would basically be impossible to add if we were stuck with the original parameters of the chamfer box. So, so polygon modeling is all about having access to the the sub objects, the the components that make up a mesh, uh, uh, or um, editable polygon mesh, and that's uh, the vertices, which are the individual points, um, edges, which we show as the edges uh, be basically between two vertices and polygons are faces that are defined by uh, three or more edges and what 3ds max calls an element which is an entire connected set of faces and so what we'll do in the next tutorial so so in, in terms of why do we want to sometimes we, we we want to be able to manipulate these things at the at the sub object level to add detail or uh, to to work in a in a in a in fundamentally different way um, I guess there's another thing I should show here as well and uh, and that is the idea of um, using subdivision on top of this so sometimes what we'll do is if I start with a let's see I'm just going to start with uh, a box because sub polygon modeling is often called box modeling. And uh, let's make that a little bit better box. There we go. And I'm just going to add a few edges to this. <clears throat> and um, so now what I'll do is just add to this box object a edit poly modifier and that's just like I converted this to an editable poly but because it's in the modifier stack here I can actually go back to the original box and then I can go to the edit poly modifier where I may want to uh, make some e make some edits and then the other thing I'm going to add to this on top is we'll do a um, I'm going to keep it simple and just use a turbo smooth modifier. And the turbo smooth, I'm going to set the iterations from one to two. And if you see when I add that turbo smooth modifier, it's actually uh, making this mesh more complex. The higher the number of iterations, the more complex this mesh is. And it's actually rounding this and uh, uh, basically taking each face and dividing it into smaller faces. And um, so the nice thing about this this box modeling or polygon modeling feature is that as I work at the edit poly level and uh, I'm going to turn on I'm going to actually go in and just select a polygon here and um, I'm going to turn on show cage and I should just isolate this get the other stuff out of the way here you can see in 3ds max I can see that orange cage which represents the original box if I turn off the polygon that's my original topology and now if I'm in edit poly I can start to and I'm working with the polygon object I can actually start to manipulate this face by face and if you see if I turn off the turbo smooth all I did was lift a face up or pull a face out here or maybe select three faces and pull them out here and um, but with with the turbo smooth 
modifier or mesh smooth modifier does the same thing you can see how the shape becomes a much more organic shape and uh, with higher iterations becomes even smoother and uh, so this is a very powerful kind of uh, um, modeling because we can we can start to really deform things and uh, very quickly uh, we're taking a, a simple box shape and uh, turning it into something that's much more organic and um, and smooth so this is this is kind of the uh, the um, this is the reason polygon modeling is 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 appealing is because we can we can start to get some really nice organic shapes and um, and uh, so I'm going to basically call this uh, call this introduction a wrap here and we'll do the next tutorial which we'll get into um, uh, we'll actually build this plate uh, one of these plates from a cylinder uh, from a basic cylinder and we'll go from there so so I hope to uh, I hope you guys I hope you guys follow into the next next tutorial